What you just witnessed are airstrikes in the Gaza Strip. And unfortunately, the death toll among Palestinian civilians continues to mount as Israeli airstrikes in Gaza enter their second week. Now, uh, the situation on the ground has not improved at all over the weekend. In fact, the conflict has only escalated. Uh, the current conflict has escalated rapidly into one of the worst rounds of violence uh, between the Israelis and Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Um, since 2014, that was when 2200 Gazans were killed with in, in, in the middle of the fighting. Um, approximately half of them were civilians at the time. But over the weekend, we learned that two Israeli airstrikes in Gaza killed at least 43 Palestinians, including eight children and injured 50 others, most of whom were women and children early Sunday, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. That information has been confirmed with independent organizations as well, humanitarian organizations, shelters, buildings, and homes. Housing civilians were bombed, and we're about to show you an example of one of the buildings that was bombed. Uh, just this past weekend, take a look. Early Saturday morning, Israeli warplanes struck a home in the crowded camp, killing at least 10 people, eight of them children. Among them, four of Mohammed Hadidi's five sons and his wife. The only son to survive, found under the rubble, was five month old Omar. <laughs> They destroyed the house without warning at 1.30 in the morning, says Mohammed. People were sleeping, the children were sleeping. Entire families are being wiped out in these airstrikes. Hadidi's family is one of them. The only person in his family who survived was a five-month-old baby, his son Omar. Early Saturday, a five-month-old baby named Omar was the lone survivor in a house that was hit and destroyed in an Israeli airstrike that hit the Al Shati refugee camp, killing 10 members of his family, including eight children, according to the infant's father, Mohammed Hadidi. He also was quoted as saying, they were so happy to get away from the grief, but they didn't know it was their turn, he said. Hadidi lost his wife, three children, and his brother and sister-in-law, and their four children in the strike. He was also quoted as saying, they didn't do anything bad to anyone. They were looking for a happy place to celebrate Eid, Hadidi said, crying. Why were they punished? Um, what were they punished for? Um, yeah. So, um, it's Eid is the most uh, sacred religious holiday in Islam. And Netanyahu's government attacked Al-Aqsa Mosque during Eid, which lasts 30 days. And then at the end, or Ramadan lasts 30 days. And at the end, you have Eid. And and so that, that is why they had gone over to their uncle's house, that gentleman's brother's house. And they thought they would be more safe there. And it turns out they weren't because there's nowhere to hide because Gaza is an open air prison. So, and it's very densely populated, it's a tiny uh, strip of land. And, um, and so when they drop bombs, uh, they know with great certainty that they're going to kill civilians. It's not like they missed the over 500 children that they killed in 2014 in that conflict. It's not like they're unaware of the 58 children killed in this conflict. It's not that they're unaware that these bombs are massive and when you, Throw them in the middle of a civilian population, you're gonna kill lots of people's brothers, sisters in laws, kids, grandmothers, etc. And they keep saying Hamas is hiding in, in among civilian populations in Gaza. There is nothing but civilian populations. And so one way that they could the civilians could be separated from the others is if, for example, Israel did not have a permanent blockade and people could run out of Gaza instead of it being, I guess, you know. A shooting gallery for the Israeli Defense Forces, but they're all trapped. There's they can't. There's nowhere to go. And so, and by, let me just address this absurd talking point that is pure propaganda by the Israeli government. They say Hamas uses the civilians as shields because they fire from the general vicinity. This is the same kind of Cheney-esque talking point we got during the Iraq War when Cheney, Dick Cheney, said Iraq comes from the same geographic region of the world as the people who attacked us on Al Qaeda. On 9-11, um, no, Iraq and Al-Qaeda were enemies. And you just smeared Iraq because you want to attack and said, yeah, they're all Muslims, what difference does it make, right? So now in, in the case of uh, the Gaza Strip, 
What do they want people to do? They want Hamas to go into the middle of a desert. I don't even know if it exists, right? I don't know exactly they lay out in the topography of Gaza Strip. And in the middle of the desert and plant a flag and go, this is where we'll fire the rockets from Israel. Who would do that? Of course they're not gonna do that. It's like the British saying to the American colonies, you guys are fighting an unfair revolutionary war here. You're hiding in the trees and you're doing surprise attacks, which is what we did all the time because they had superior forces. You know what the British called us? Terrorists, right? And so now, and oh, you're hiding among the civilians. Well, where the hell else am I gonna hide? You have the superior forces. And it's not a matter of hiding, guys. There is no force on earth that would put something in the middle of a desert and go, here, go ahead, bomb here, right? And so if they had an actual country, they would put they would do what Israel does and Israel has a massive military right they would have whole different installations that were incredibly well protected so they wouldn't have to be anywhere near civilians and by the way Hamas could use the same excuse they're too dumb right but they could say well i was firing towards israel's military installations they have to land elsewhere because our rockets suck which would actually be true now it's not true cuz they're firing indiscriminately into israel right but they could at least make that claim because israel claim is just as untrue yet they use it for propaganda and every outlet prints it overall pretty good job by the media just want to be fair right but yes they obligatorily print out israeli propaganda Without mentioning, it's an open air prison and there's nowhere for anyone to go. They say, oh, they're only hitting them because they're, it's Hamas's fault. The victim had it, the Palestinians had it coming. If they didn't wear that skirt, we wouldn't have had to do what we did. If they didn't, if they weren't in an open air prison that we put them into and didn't have it coming, well, what, we wouldn't have to kill their children. No, you're making an active choice to do that. There's no question. And by the way, let's be super clear. Again, I want to remind everybody in every story, Netanyahu did this for his own political purposes. He couldn't form a government. The other side was about to form a government or certainly was going to attempt one and might have used an Arab voting bloc within Israel. Now using the Arab voting bloc has become nearly impossible. This is 100% for Netanyahu's political career, let alone his corruption charges, etc. And we're all going around saying as if it's a legitimate thing to murder kids. So that Netanyahu has a better chance of retaining power. It is disgusting and anybody in the Biden administration, which includes almost all of them, that has supported this throughout is also disgusting and ruins America's morals, let alone Israel's. You know, the asymmetry that you're referring to, Cenk, is always depicted in the number of civilian casualties, right? So if you look at the civilian casualties on the Palestinian side versus the Israeli side, You'll notice that there's a huge disparity, and it's because of both the military capabilities and also the um, the way that Israel has the ability to protect itself with advanced technology, with advanced weaponry, with things like the Iron Dome. Whereas you're right, in in Gaza, there is really no protection, and so you hear the same excuse being used over and over again in regard to Hamas, but. Even if there's evidence, and I think in some cases, and we'll talk about this later in greater detail, there's really a lack of evidence. And I'm suspicious of some of the claims regarding Hamas. But even if there's abundant evidence indicating that Hamas is hiding out in a building, that building has a bunch of civilian children and women in it, just civilians, period. How do you still justify bombing that building knowing that hundreds of civilians are gonna die? I just, that's just not a good enough excuse, especially when you look at the military capability of Hamas, the weaponry that Hamas has, come on. I mean, it's just, Hamas is not posing in many cases an imminent threat to the Israelis. They've been firing rockets, that is true. But there's a reason why the number of casualties on the Israeli side is about 10. Whereas on the Palestinian side, well, let me give you the numbers as of Monday morning today. Right, the numbers are higher at this point. But as of Monday morning Eastern time, the death toll in Gaza has climbed to a total of 197, including at least 58 children and 38 women, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Since the beginning of the Israeli airstrikes on Gaza this week, at least 1,235 Palestinians have been injured, with the number expected to rise. I have no doubt that the number of casualties has already gone up since I produced this story. On the Israeli 
Israeli side, 10 Israelis have been killed by rockets fired from Gaza, according to the Israeli Defense Force. But let's also acknowledge the fact that there was an opportunity to engage in a ceasefire last week. Hamas agreed to it, there was mounting pressure for the Israeli government to agree to it. But Benjamin Netanyahu said no, possibly for the reasons that Jenk mentioned earlier, the political reasons and Netanyahu's own self interest. And what gets to me is the fact that people like this exist, right? That people like Netanyahu don't care about the deaths of civilian children. Like they don't, as long as it helps his political career, that's all that matters. Yes. I can't get past that. Yeah, sometimes I despair of humanity. <sighs> I mean, so the, the Israeli people, you, you know, you, you have elections. You're okay with this, you and I guess so. Five hundred and some odd children last in 2014. Look, guys, let me ask you a question. Five hundred fifty to be yeah, specific. Yeah, five hundred fifty-eight this time. And when and and you know what Netanyahu says, like we're going to keep going until um, basically what he's saying is until they learn their lesson. Not, it's not about learning a lesson. What lesson? What? What's the lesson to learn? Understand that we're going to enslave you for all of time and never end the occupation. And you will be lesser than us and inferior to us and not have rights and not have a country. That's the lesson you want them to learn, right? It, it, by the way, supporting the occupation is total moral depravity. Saying that the Palestinians cannot be free for over 50 years because all they understand is violence means all you understand is violence and you don't mind killing those kids over and over and over again. I look, it's a brutal fact and it makes people super uncomfortable. But you know what's more uncomfortable? Having bombs drop on top of kids and incinerate them. That's very uncomfortable. So if I've made you uncomfortable, because in your honestly, your justifications in your head for whatever reason, that no, the, the Palestinians must be occupied. These inferior people are violent savages, they must be occupied. If that was your justification, and be honest, be honest, there is no other justification. Okay, it's not a three year occupation, it's a 54 year occupation. And by some counts, obviously, could be longer than that. All right, so look, the question I was gonna ask you guys, and maybe some of you will answer it differently. I guarantee you that some conservatives will answer it differently. What if someone's firing at your house? Now, you're scared to death for your kids. I mean, they're firing, uh, like, as in, let's, in this analogy, a gun, right? I, you wanna protect your family. But you know that the house that they're firing from, if you bomb it, the threat will be gone. First of all, that's not even the right analogy here because the threat won't be gone because the threat is based on the occupation. But let's grant that, the threat will be gone. But inside the house is the guy doing the shooting and four kids. Would you drop a bomb on that house? I guarantee you a lot of conservatives say, I know hiding in the bathtub, waiting for the police, all these things are not good enough. I dropped a bomb in a second to protect my family, okay. And that's what a lot of Israelis say now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't murder those four kids. I, you're making an active decision. Yes, I'm going to kill that four year old boy, that seven year old girl, that 13 year old girl and that 15 year old boy. I'm going to kill them because I, I have some threat. And by the way, again, the death toll in the actual real world is 10 Israelis and nearly 200 Palestinians, right? So some amount of threat and, and a lot of people say, no, Jake, I'm glad you asked that analogy. No, I'm perfectly comfortable killing those four kids. Hey, they sh hey, you know what, that guy shouldn't have hit among the four kids. It's on his head, it's not on my head. I killed him instantly and I protected people in my house from 5% chance of dying. In the real world, 0.0001% chance of dying, whatever the number is. And I'm comfortable murdering those kids. I'm not, I'm not. And I, so as an American citizen and American voter, I'm not comfortable with a brutal occupation and constant killing of Palestinians and their children. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.